So in this video, we're going to be learning how to create a really simple PHP like system. So the reason I'm creating this video is because it's a really easy way for us to learn how to use SQL wrappers with PHP because PHP has built in functions and classes like MySQLi and PDO, but you're not supposed to use them on their own. You're supposed to use them as part of a database wrapper. So you can create that yourself, but most people use a pre-made one. So here's what our like system looks like. So we have two posts and if we click like, it sends an Ajax request to the server, which stores the result in the database and then JavaScript updates the page so that we don't have to refresh it. To store data in the database and to talk to our database, we're gonna use this PHP database wrapper. So I'll include a link to this GitHub page on the description, but it's really easy to install. So if I just scroll down, the way you can install it is just by including this class file in your project, or an even easier way is to use Composer. So you just copy this string, and in your project directory, you just paste that string, assuming you have Composer installed, which is just a PHP package manager. But if you have that installed, hit enter. That installed the PHP wrapper and any dependencies that it has for us. All we had to do was run that command. So because we're using Composer, we're going to require vendor slash autoload.php as opposed to the name of the class file. But the first thing we do is we create a database object, which is just an instance of our database wrapper. And we pass our MySQL host, which in this case is localhost, our username, our password, and our database table. So before I started recording, I created a database called PHP likes, and it has two tables, a likes table and a posts table. So this is the posts table. It just stores the post text and the like count. And then we have the likes table and the likes table just stores the ID of the post that was liked. So our schema and all the code will be on the high code GitHub page and there'll be a link in the video description. But once we've created our database object, we're ready to go. So what I have here is a simple HTML page. I included Bootstrap just to add a bit of CSS styling to our page just so that we could use a non-default font. But where the actual code comes in is down here. By saying DB get posts, what we're doing is we're returning all of the rows in the posts table. So that's gonna print out every post on this page. So after we've stored all of the posts in the post object, we want to loop through them using a for each loop and that will let us print out the post and the button to like it. And here we have a check to check whether a post request has been sent to our index page and whether that post request has a field called like. So if we get a post request and if that post request has a like field, we're going to use the value of the like field and we're gonna treat that as the post ID. That way we'll know which post was liked when we insert it into the database. So the first thing we do when we like a post is we update the posts table and we increment that posts like count by one. So if we go to the posts table, you can see that currently our like count is zero. So we're gonna update that like count by passing this query parameter to the update function. So the query just says set like count equal to its current count plus one. DB inc is a built-in function into our database wrapper that we downloaded on GitHub, which allows us to increment the like count by, in this case, one, but we could increment it by any number that we give to this function. And the where clause means we only want to increment the like count on the posts that we just liked. So after we've updated the posts table, we need to insert the like into the likes table. The reason we wanna do this is because if this was a system that used users and track what user liked what post, we need to store the username in the likes table. Because our simple example doesn't have any users, we're not going to store a username, but if this was a real like system, we would have a column in the likes table to store the username. So we insert a row into our likes table, and that's pretty much the whole process of liking a post. I made things a little bit nicer by including jQuery down here, and then using jQuery's Ajax functions to allow us to like a post without refreshing the page. So all we do is we send a post request to our index page, which is where we are, and we pass the like parameter to the post request and the like parameter has a value of the post ID. That's why up here, we treat the value from the like parameter as the post ID. So we get the post ID from the like button. You can see we have this data post ID attribute, which gives us the post ID. And we have this data likes attribute, which tells us how many likes a current post has had. The reason we want to know how many likes a post has had is because down here, Whenever we click the button and we get the response, we want to increase the number of likes that the like button displays. So that's what we do here. We just change the HTML and increment the number of likes by one. And finally, we increment the data attribute of the button because whenever we are updating the HTML, we get the number of likes the button has had from its data attributes. We need to increment that by one every time we click on the button. And that's pretty much it for this really simple like system. And as you can see, we can like things as many times as we want and we never have to refresh the page. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. Don't forget to check out the new highcode.org website as well. But that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.